Today we'll show you how to make a battery holder from PVC pipe for 21700 battery cells aka 2170 cells and this battery holder serves two purposes number one is to charge these batteries and number two is to put on a device to power a device for example a LED light or an RC car so over here I have five 21700 cells salvaged from a model 3 battery module and this one here salvaged from a Bosch power tool battery is a Samsung 40T as a comparison this is a regular 18650 cell and uh, you can see it's a little bit smaller usually to charge an 18650 battery I use this case and it's a very good case for this kind of battery but for 21700 cells it uh, these cases are harder to find and they are expensive and therefore that's why I want to make my own case using these PVC pipes this is the PVC pipe I'm going to use the size is 3 quarter inch and that's the uh, diameter ignore the 10 feet because that's the length of this pipe and if I put in the battery you can see it's a little bit loose I would say it's about 2 to 3 millimeter too big but uh, it's perfect for this application there are a few different kinds of PVC pipe for this size which is 3 quarter inch and this is uh, just regular PVC pipe this is called schedule 40 pipe and you can see the wall is a little bit thicker than this and if I put my battery in here it will fit in here just fine even though a little bit loose but for this one it does not fit and they also have schedule 80 PVC pipe and those are the wall is even thicker than this and you don't want those you want this one here next thing we're gonna do is to cut this in half and I have to score it first and score a straight line on this PVC is a little bit tricky even with a ruler it's still kind of tricky because this surface is round so it's hard to score a straight line the trick is put this on flat surface on a table like this take the pencil put it flat on the table and just run your pencil across and you gotta hold this still just run your pencil across here and boom you got a very straight line and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side so I have it marked here on the halfway point put it down just run the pencil across just like that I'm going to use my aviation snip to cut this but with this I can only go this far say about two inches as far as my blade would allow me to because the plastic on this is pretty hard so in order to go all the way through this has to be soft enough so here is the trick I'm going to use my heat gun to heat this up just on one side on the side that I'm going to cut and I'm going to heat it up for about I would say 30 seconds and then it will be soft enough to cut all the way through alright I've got to heat it up for about 30 seconds now we just need to cut it it's only hot on the top side so I'm able to hold it with my bare hand here there we go cut all the way through now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side so we just have to heat it up and cut it this piece here on the left was a little bit bent so all I did was I hit it right back up and it automatically straightened itself on its own I didn't even have to do anything special once it's hot enough if we go back to its original uh, shape and I did the same thing on the other piece and just like magic when it's hot enough you go back to its original shape so now it's in pretty good shape I think this is how the pipe was formed in a round configuration like this so even though when it's bent out of shape all you need is to heat it up hot enough and it will come back to its original shape and form so that's pretty cool the length of each piece of pipe 
It's about four and a half inches or 11 and a half centimeter. So next step, I'm gonna mark the position of the battery right in the middle. And it will look like that. And then I'm gonna cut along the marked area here about one centimeter on each side and then we'll just cut it away like so and we do the same on the other side and just cut away about one centimeter we look like that I did the same on the other side and that's what it looks like I'm gonna heat this up and bend this straight up 90 degrees to make a terminal for the battery and I'm gonna use the head of the screw and we'll go in here like that to make the terminal so I'm gonna have to make sure that there's a gap for the head of the screw to fit in here otherwise it'll be too tight it should be hot enough now so I just need to bend it straight up make sure I have a about two millimeter gap I'm going to bend this up just like that and hold it once it's cool it will remain in place straight up like that now we do the same thing on this side I already heat it up so just have to bend it straight up like that next step is to drill two holes and then put the screw through washer and then we wrap the electrical wire around and we secure with a nut and voila we are done in case you're wondering what kind of screw i use this is the screw that i use now let's put this on and see if it works there we go I don't really need a spring for this the flexibility of the plastic itself is a spring and because PVC plastic is pretty hard this spring is pretty hard on the battery so it's very tight not going anywhere all right let's see what we got here see if it works 4.1 volt so it works I have made eight of these and I'm gonna mount them on a piece of wooden board I drilled two holes on the PVC two holes on the wooden board ignore the third hole because it was a mistake and then I'm gonna use a couple of screws and just mount the PVC on this piece of board and here is the close-up of what it looks like and I've got all eight of them installed that's what they look like next step is to figure out how to charge these batteries and the easiest way is just to use a regular lithium-ion battery charger and uh, hook up the terminals here to an alligator clips and then charge the batteries that way problem is every port on this charger only puts out about one amp max and if I want to charge eight of these batteries it's going to take an amazingly long time to charge especially the size of this battery is a lot bigger than regular 18650 I'm going to use these boards to charge the batteries instead these are TP5100 boards and they can charge a single lithium ion at two amps max All right, I think I'm finally done here. We've got all the battery holders in. I've got the charging boards in, a switch, XT60 connector, and I got the two main bus bars from bare copper wires, very thick copper wires. These bus bars are size 10 and capable of handling about 30 amps. Each charging board can do about two amps max. I got eight from here, so total about 16 amps max. So. Uh, these two wires is more than capable of handling of the currents from these charging boards. These charging boards are not the one you saw earlier in the beginning of the video. 
these are so these are the tp 5100 i put in at the uh, earlier part of the video but after some testing i burned out four balls already you can see how it burned out the ic here is pretty badly burned i first chose these balls because they can charge my batteries at two amps but after just powering it on for just for a few seconds they just burned out and i got four different ways to burn them i'm going to talk about it in the next video but these are the worst board ever made to charge lithium ion batteries so i went ahead and replaced with a different charging board and these also charge lithium ion batteries at two amps and they are a lot better I also thought of using a TP456 board and modify it with a resistor 1.2 kilo ohm in parallel with the ones already on there to make the total resistance about 650 ohm and that will increase the charging current up to let's say about 1.6 1.7 amps problem is it gets hot so I have to make a heat sink cool down the chip so that won't burn out but this thing, let me put it on here, it's, uh, it gets too big, especially with the uh, resistor added and then the heat sink. And therefore, that's why I chose a different charging board. And the problem with these charging boards is that they require 5 volts input, and each one is 2 amps. I got 8 from here, total is 16 amps. And that's a problem because where do you find 5 volts? 16 amp power supply for this almost all 5 volt power supply look like this they're usually made for charging cell phone and stuff they're pretty small usually max out about 2 amps there are some 5 volt power supply that you can find online that are higher power but they're usually hard to find and very expensive but fortunately there's a way to get a high power 5 volt power supply for cheap and almost free and in my case it's free is from hacking into a computer power supply so this is an old computer power supply that I don't use anymore it's 350 watts and let's look at the amp rating here for 5 volts it can get up to 21 amp isn't that crazy and for 12 volt it can get up to 10 amps it can also provide 3.3 volts at 22 amps but for this application we don't use this so the only thing that i need is this 5 volts 21 amps and it's very easy to make a 5 volt and 12 volt power supply from this all you have to do is to bundle all the black wires together and they are ground and then inside there also a bundle of yellow wire a bundle of red and a bundle of orange the yellow wires are 12 volt, red wires are 5 volts, and the orange wires are 3 volt. So you just have to bundle off the same color wire together. And uh, I did that, and I just saw a single thick wire to the outside with this connector, so I can use it for an external application. So in this case, uh, this is the bundle of 5 volts. So I can just hook this to my charger here and I have a uh, 5 volt power supply let's put it to the test shall we got my amp meter here to measure the current from the main wire and I've got 8 of my Tesla Model 3 batteries here ready to be charged so I'm gonna put it in one by one so every time I put in it's gonna increase by about 2 amps let's turn it on right, here we go First one, exactly two amps. Is that amazing? The total amount of current going through the main wire is 14.1, 14.2 amps. Not exactly 16 amps as I expected. All right, two amps each. A from should be 16 amps. But uh, that should be close enough. Here's my setup looking from this angle. So that's the computer power supply. That's my amp meter. 
So there you have it, how to make a plastic case to charge uh, the 21700 batteries. And besides charging the batteries, you can make the case for uh, other electronic devices, anything that runs on batteries. Uh, for example, I've got a multimeter here that I use 18650 on the back here. But uh, I plan to replace these with uh, 21700 to have a long run time so I can use the case for these. This is the camera that I use 18650 and uh, been using this for years and it's still working as of now. This camera uses two AA batteries and uh, I replace the batteries with some dummy connector here and I put wire to run on the outside and it goes onto a case and then powered by an 18650. So I plan to replace this case with that, that PVC case and put a 21700 cells in here and uh, I can have a much long run time. This is an RC car that runs on, you guessed it, double A batteries. So I replace with 18650 and uh, it <laughs> runs a lot longer than the double A. And now I'm trying to replace this case because this case is removable. You can remove the batteries and replace on the go. So I plan to replace this case with that case so that I can run 2700 cells on here. And that will give it a lot more power and a lot longer run time. And the possibility is endless. I mean, anything that runs on batteries, it doesn't matter what kind of batteries, you can replace with this. And that's all for now, folks. I've got a lot more projects going on with these Tesla Model 3 batteries, especially the ones I salvaged from my Tesla Model 3 I bought earlier. There are about a thousand of these in that battery pack. And the project is going to be very exciting coming up next. Until next time, thanks for watching.